Okay, hello everyone. This is Tom, and I've got a guest, uh, James Dowling, here from uh, from Winnipeg. Correct? No. No, Windsor. Windsor. That's, yeah, the W from Canada. That guy. South um, of Detroit. <laughs> yeah, near the near Detroit guy, um, and uh, this is going to be sort of a, this will be a fun conversation because we we don't have any real map to go by, which is perfect for two Aspies, and so we're just going to go with that. So go ahead, James, if you want to say a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm from uh, I'm from I'm basically from Central Ontario in Canada, which is a little bit farther in the north, probably on the same range as like Northern Michigan, that kind of thing. I'm farm boy, grew up in the country. Um, I didn't get diagnosed with uh, Asperger's until about three years ago, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I always knew I was a different my entire life, right? Just like everybody else, I yeah. was felt kind of different. Uh, I was very fortunate that my father put me in team sports and things like that. Um, I learned how to blend in socially um, very well, uh, to the point where it, it took three years for my psychiatrist to say, okay. You have Asperger's. Right? It, it <laughs> yeah. took that long, and it was only when, to be to be fair, it was when my sister got diagnosed with cancer, and uh, she basically raised me. Her and her husband basically raised me, and when she got diagnosed for cancer, I was I, I was upset, but you know, the Aspie way of upset. And I discussed this with my doctor. I'm like, well, this is my issue, and he was like, okay, I got you. Mm-hmm. Right. So he knew then that uh, that it was Asperger's because I was being tested for any social. And a lot of people mistake antisocial. They think antisocial is, you know, like the, the horrible people. No, no, not not the case, right? Right. It's just they, they do things asocially, and, and, and which a lot of Aspies do as well, right? So we get lumped in that group. Uh, and just because I was, you know, young and rowdy, <laughs> uh, my past would be more indicative of somebody with uh, antisocial personality disorder. Not that, it, not that it was a bad criminal or anything, just rowdy and yeah. uh, just things like that, right? But. Uh, not to the extent that uh, my best friend, who's a sociopath, oh, wow. would have done it. That's actually true. Yeah, I have a best friend who's a, he's a sociopath. He's a good guy, though. Yeah. We won't use it. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he's a very good guy. Like, he's not a bad person. Right. Uh, he was just tortured as a kid, right? So, it's yeah. sad. It's sad how they make them. And I believe he was an Aspie to start, who got tortured. Wow. Uh, like, abused. Or abused, right? Yeah. But severely. Mm. alcoholic mother right mm-hmm. uh, divorced parents lived in a yeah just not a good situation there's so much that's such a common theme um and i i guess maybe it is with all kids to a certain degree i mean oh i think it's yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it has anything to do with what disorders you may have or yeah right? it's just uh it's stress and societal stress uh we're not designed to live like this right right it's just that simple none of us are I, I, the neurotypicals are a little bit better at it they have the genetics that allows them to to be very social and pack animals and we're not we're mm. we're not pack animals yeah we're not bad people we're good people but we just we don't blend in big packs it's right not our way which and right. it ha- that's an advantage that gives even i think it's a, an advantage to society too that uh is overlooked i mean i think there's a it balances things out because then you can get too much of a pack mentality and well you, you well the problem and and i say this and i, I say this in no way mean to be mean to anybody or um, without the diversity, you have the same. And, uh, you know, when you have the same, you don't have change. So without us, we'd still be cavemen. Hmm. We're probably worse, right? Yeah. We are the diverse. You know, like, and I always say this, and I say it as a joke, but I don't mean it as a joke. You can imagine the first person who ever rubbed two sticks together to make fire and then showed somebody else how to do it? They weren't neurotypical. They wouldn't have done that. Well, we did. Somebody like us did. They sat there for weeks, months, whatever, every day, and then actually irritated somebody enough to show them how to do it. It's like, and I think the same go with the wheel, yeah, the printing press, and that we, you know, because the neurotypicals just won't do that. But they they'll come up with other things, right? Like other things that are great for society, right? We come up with those introverted things. They come up with the extroverted. <laughs> it's a balance. Everything's a balance. Yeah, yeah. You need us both. I think back in the. Back in the way back in the history, I think I think that we're old DNA. I know a lot of people think that we're new. I don't believe that. I believe we're old DNA. Hmm. We've always been around. Um, I think the neurotypicals are newer DNA, and they came about with agriculture. So when agriculture started, they, it was better to be that way. So they were better off. I would imagine if you could get yourself into hunter-gatherer tribes, non-contacted, you'd find more people like us. 
who nobody cared about. We'd be the shamans. We'd be the great hunters. You know, we wouldn't be the ones staying staying in the camp protecting it. No, no, we'd be out because we're sensitive. We're like animals, right? Hmm. I've noticed that a lot. My senses are way greater. Like you know, I stand out in the backyard with the dog, and if you're watching us, it's just me and her just looking at all the noises. Right? <laughs> That's never stopped that other people aren't even noticing. Right? Hmm. Interesting. So I think there's there's a big deal there with us, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, like I think my Asperger's been a gift to me more than a, a detriment. It, like I have no education. I, I dropped out of school in grade grade ten uh, as early as I could, but in reality, I dropped out in probably grade one. I just showed up every day. <laughs> um, yeah. That's true. I didn't learn anything in school. Or I learned how to be social. That's what I learned in school. Yeah. I mean, I learned a little bit of math and a little bit of history, but I already knew most of them when I went there. Like a lot of us. Well, you learn how to take t- take their tests, is what I th- say. You learn how to do multiple uh, choice, and <laughs> yeah, that's all I ever did. Actually, when I was in school, I was I was such a hyperactive kid. I was first medicated when I was four. Wow, which is pretty unheard of, right? Yeah. And uh, especially yeah, that would have been in 1971. Yeah, right. They didn't know what to do with me, and uh, so they medicated me at that age. And now my my mom took me off that medication. She didn't stay for very long, but. We basically had to deal with my class. Like they, like if, everybody knows what a voting box looks like, right? When you go into a room and you have that voting box. So basically, I went to school in that. That's, that was around my desk every day. That's I sat in there. I didn't have to participate in class. I could do whatever I wanted inside my box as long as I wrote the test. And so I, I always was number one or number two in the test. So they didn't know what to do with me. And that, and that continued right up until grade eight. <laughs> I started in about grade two, I think. Wow. But I was just a disruption for the class. But, you know, in other times they would, you know, it wasn't always that bad. And I, and I say that, but other times they would let me teach other classes and things like that. Because, I, you know, I was just a little two-year-old who could read better than the grade eights, right? So I'd read to them and stuff like that. Wow, that's cool. That's but, cool. but uh, yeah. And then I discovered hockey. And uh, I figured you can, you, can, you can make more friends on a team sport than you can anywhere else, right? Because those, no matter how weird you are on a, on a sport team, the guys will, or the people will support you, right? And I and I played goalie, right? So you're allowed to be weird, so nobody cares. You know, it's only <laughs> guys are goalie, perfect. And I was good at, it, right? So cool, cool. You you develop a lot of uh, like lifelong friends like that. I, it, like for me, I call them more good acquaintances, mm-hmm. right? But I'm sure they would consider me a friend. Like you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just yeah. Or I have a little perspective on what friends are, right? We're we're prob- I, I'm 61. Are you close to that age? I'm 52. Okay. I'll be 50 in uh, July. Okay. Um, I uh, yeah. Okay. When you said that, I, I, I was 10 years off in my thinking. Um, that, uh, but I I was diagnosed actually about 69. That's I think that's why I was thinking we were about the same age. Um, so about the time you were diagnosed at, in at the age four, I was diagnosed at the age what 11 I think it was, and um, um, I was ADHD uh, dyslexic, and I th- I always wondered if either they suspected and I never was told or if they just were completely oblivious to the fact that it was probably, it was also a, a ASD and, um, you know, yeah. So I have a, I have a, a like a little theory about that. I, I shouldn't call it a theory, more of a hypothesis. And, uh, it, it just, it's from people that I've spoken to who have both Asperger's and ADHD. It seems to mask ADHD seems to mask the Asperger's a little bit mm-hmm. socially. It allows us to be a little more. So it doesn't help us in any way. It, it comforts other people more, hmm. right? So when you, when you when you run into a uh, like like myself or or like Natalie, for instance, right? So you run into somebody like us. We're ex- extroverted. We're chatty. We, you wouldn't think we're autistic, but inside we are. But yeah. because of the ADD, we don't focus on all these little things constantly. We have to work harder. Right, so it's become a practice that we get more social, but it's only to a point. We still overload. We still get all that. Yeah. But on like superficial social things, we are much better off, I think. And and, and I think the goes the same thing goes when with people who are gifted. When if they're very gifted and they have ADD, it's the same thing. It allows that social, social like uh, think of uh, I don't know if you're up on your. Uh, like scientists, but uh, like I, I think of the difference between a Richard Feynman, if you know who he is. I don't. Uh, if not, people, you can look him up. Uh, he's one of the most brilliant men who ever lived. Uh, so if you look at the difference between him and, say, uh, Einstein, mm-hmm. 
Einstein's your typical, you know, you know, lab coat wearing geeky genius, right? <laughs> right. Whereas Richard Fine may have been smarter, but he's an extrovert joking around, you know, woman's man. He's so the, you, you get all things, and and I think the, the funny thing is Feynman once famously took an IQ test and got one twenty six, right? Which is ridiculous, but it's probably because of ADD. So, and a lot of people say he faked it. No, probably not. He probably actually took it. So some of his subsections would have been genius level, but the other ones would have been morons because he's got ADD, right? Yeah. And I know going through getting tested as an adult, they're like, oh yeah, no. When you're a kid, these things don't show up, right? So you always hear, you'll hear about people who get uh, diagnosed like uh, uh, Terrence Tau, for instance, is IQ's 220 or whatever, right? Highest on record. Yeah, well, they guess that when they're kids, right? It's because of how advanced they are as kids. The real measure of IQ is when you're an adult. Tested that. Right, so you like if Richard Feynman would taken it and he was any kind of a normal guy, like he probably would have scored two fifty when he was a kid. That is an old one one twenty six. That is where IQ tests don't take into account twice exceptionality when you're kids because you just blow past those milestones. Like so when they tested me as a kid, I just blew past all those miles. Like I have dyslexia too. But how do you find it? Hmm. Because I got to already read before I went to school. So I didn't have anybody teach me, so they can't find that. Yeah. They found it as an adult, and they still, they're not sure what it is. They're like, okay, well, you dip here, but why? Is it interest? Do you not know how to do it? We can't tell. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think you get a lot of that. That's why uh, Aspies are different. We're different. They should probably have a different test for us. Yeah. yeah. Because we don't, uh, all of the, all of the, like the ADD guys, all of those guys, we're just, we're different. Well, you know, it's funny so when we, we when, when in testing, this least we, this is, I've always had trouble taking, even like when I was doing like ASPE tests and stuff, because I'd sit there and I'd look at that question in 50 different ways, you know, and it's like, yeah. and, and then, I mean, and it's, it's, it's not this, it's not black and white. It's, it was, well, what if, what if, well, in that situation. Which is a very unautistic thing to say, Thomas, if it's not very black and white. We're supposed to be very black and white people. <laughs> I am definitely not, right? No. <laughs> there is no black and white to me. There's shades of gray and everything. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's never like, ending. I also, like, I don't know about yourself, but I also have the, the ability, which is very unautistic, like, because I have zero issues putting myself into somebody else, someone else's perspective and actually thinking like they do. I, I don't know why I've been in, maybe it's just a defense mechanism I developed as a child. I don't know. I have no issues doing that. I can see both sides of the argument. I can see all sides of the argument. I think I think the reason that I did, and I'm trying to think of, I think in some, I don't know that I say I still do because I'm fairly, I'm fairly accepting of myself right now. But uh, um, I wasn't as a kid because I felt so rejected. No, me neither. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, and yeah. I, that's when that's a time I really remember looking at people smile and 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 practicing, I guess, in a sense, that smile yeah. or. Yeah. Just, well, me too. Watching TV and try to like I, I will watch like I will watch movies and and see how when they interacted. Well, how are they doing it? What what you know? Yeah. What faces did they? I don't, just my dad taught me. My dad was very good at it. Right. Um, your dad and I was very you, very fortunate to have a father like that because my mother, I'm pretty sure, was like me. Okay. Right, but with with almost no social skills and 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 didn't even care to have social skills, but she was brilliantly smart. Right, like like frighteningly smart. Yeah. Uh, cool. Whereas my dad, he was also very, very smart, very intelligent man, but he was in the Navy for 26 years. So he had all of that experience and knowledge. And he had, like, he had no, uh, he had no hate in him. He didn't care. Like, my dad was in World War Two. Hmm. He was in the Navy in World War Two. My brother married a German girl. And they lived two doors from us, right? Her grandfather was an SS guy in World War Two. So my father and him, they should not have talked. They had no issues. They just go and drink beer together. They had no issues, and they would just say, "Well, it was wartime." Yeah, he didn't do anything to me. I didn't do anything to him. It was wartime. Yeah, yeah. And that, that always struck me as like, "Wow, that's if you can do that." It's kind of hard to hold a grudge against somebody, right? When you like that man would have killed you. You know, when you were when you were a young man, he would have thought nothing of killing you. It's I think and yet now you I think have a the, beer with him and no problem. Yeah, I think a lot of people, when his own family had a hard time doing it. His grandkids had a hard time talking to him. My father didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very weird. I, but think- I was very fortunate. That. Now, I mean, he, he had his bad moments too, <laughs> like every father back in the day. But it's, he was he was a good man. I see a lot of people that uh, that have gone through war that realize that maybe 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 not immediately after, but after they get a chance to really step back and look, they sort of say, you know, this is 
this wasn't personal. This this is a, this is yeah. two countries. Not personal at all. Yeah, and um, it, and and I think a lot of them, a lot of people even uh, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but I think there's sort of a regret in the sense of realizing maybe it was something that needed to be done, but at the same time, it's like what a what a what a horrible situation when you get two that that is the reason that you go to war is that you know you be, yeah. your shipping lane is blocking my shipping lane or something well, yeah you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you look at times like this when there's like this coronavirus or COVID 19 you can see how the world can actually come together like i don't hate anybody from any anywhere in the world and and i like the fact that you see oftentimes you see uh you know on youtube you'll see american vets right because you guys have tons of them and you'll see them in like a little cafe somewhere in the south and somebody's bugging a Muslim. And it'll be the vet who was in Afghanistan who will come up and get in, in the way and say, hey, this isn't right. right? And that's nice, right? Because, yeah. it, you know, because we're all the same, man. We all want the same thing. Just because you were born in a different country, you didn't have the same advantages, right? I think as autistics, we understand what it's like to be different, but kind of the same. Like, we look the same. You would expect us to be the same, but we're not. Well, it's this is interesting because uh, I think when uh, when you go to a different culture and you start realizing, I mean, it, it, this is the same sort of a uh, dynamic that happens between as, uh, people on the spectrum and not, is that you don't know what to think of each other. More so people that are not on the spectrum looking at people on the spectrum. But it's sort of a, it's a foreign, it's an unknown, and um, people are like, uh, my, my... It's my, fear. More my, fear of the unknown. Yeah, yeah, my my toolkit doesn't work. I I don't. If you mm -hmm. don't communicate the same, if you don't socialize the same, then we're both sort of left in this uh, this fog. Um, and but anyway, right. oh, distrust or there's something. Oh, oh I, you know, it's like you know, a, a cat and a dog nosing off to each other. They won't look. Yeah, yeah. It's a good chance they'll be best buddies. Yeah, they're not going to unless they can. Yeah. Get over the fact that what the cat is one's a dog, right? Just right, that, right. That dissimilar. <laughs> you, you, you see that like I I. Uh, Living in, uh, so I lived in the Toronto area for a while. Toronto's extraordinarily multi-diverse, right? Okay. You won't get a more multi-diverse place, uh, multicultural than Toronto. Wow. And you quickly learn when you live there. Racism is silly. It's just silly, right? There's a lot more class distinctions and financial hmm. things going on than just race, right? Yeah. And yeah, you, you want to say like, yes, poor people commit more crimes. Yeah, they do. But it doesn't matter what color they are, yeah. Right? Because in Canada here, we, you know, the poor white people commit a lot of crimes too. Right? Yeah, right. It, it's just the way it is, and people don't see it that way. Oh, 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 you know. And then you look at the drug war and things like this. It's just ridiculous. But the the government causes most of these things. If you just left people on their own, they're not going to care. Yeah. Then they'll just care about their neighborhoods, right? Because it's the way people are. They're tribal. They won't care what color the people in their neighborhoods are if, without infer interference. Just how do people treat them and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And then they'll dislike the neighborhood beside them. But they'll all dislike it. If you take the class out of it, right? So our society's our problem, not not the people in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the way it is. The people are fine. Yes, there's assholes. But the vast majority of people are not. Right. right. They just don't know and they're ignorant. And when I say ignorant, I don't mean that insultively. They, I, I mean it in the literal. They, right. They don't, they don't have the information. They're not aware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is unfortunate. And then I find a lot of Aspies, we have the information. Because it took a lifetime of studying these things, right? So yeah, yeah. That's we're, and we have the ability to retain it, and we don't get emotionally overwhelmed. But, like, we don't... Our logic comes first for us, right? So we can logically see why things happen. And that's difficult for other people. That's a huge advantage that, yeah. that a lot of people don't realize that we have. Yeah, well, it's... it's I mean, this, the way I describe it as, um, is that it's... Everything, and this is what this is kind of fun. This is maybe like our our special interest over, but it's the way our minds work. And that is, you you learn one thing, and then you go, how does this connect? Or, or you see how it connects with. I mean, so like I went through aviation maintenance, um, and was one of the greatest experiences in my life because we learned hydraulics and and pneumatics and sheet metal working and all you know engines and turbines and and so I got to know the physics and everything about it. So all those things I see, whether it's somebody talking about. Oh, I don't know, some new device that's been invented or something, I can go, oh, okay, I know the principles of airflow or or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can then start applying everything to everything else. And right. it is all sort of one, it's it's, it's all one thing. Um, it's just yeah. different aspects of it. Or, I mean, it's hard to explain, but that is our mind. Oh, 
me, it is not like I everything is connected. I, yeah, everything is. Connected. Yeah, and the more you're willing to look at those connections, the easier your time on Earth will be, kind of thing. Like you'll understand a lot more. Well, see, those things are connected. Everything, like I, I think once you accept that everything's connected like that, right? You stop fighting against that. Like oh, this is different. This is different. No, it didn't. All the same. Everything's connected. We are all one big entity moving through space yeah. really fast. Yeah. And once we realize that, we're all together. So, you know, it, it's it's the it's the ecosystem, right? We're just a big ecosystem moving through space. So if you, if you mess with one system, you mess with it all. People just don't realize that. Right? We're well, all connected. One of the things that I've been... tree grows because we exhale oxygen. We grow because he exhales... You, you know, or we exhale carbon dioxide. That's right. And it's the same thing. And, like... It's we're all connected, yeah. and that's how I look at everything. Well, right? there's everything. There's a there's a guy that I've been watching. Um, his, his name is Dr. Ben Davidson. He's uh, got a, a website called uh, Suspicious Observers, and he was he's got it's actually his doctorate is a uh, in law, and uh, he used to work for the state here in Ohio. He was worked with the attorney general, and I think from the way he described what he did was. He was, I don't know if he was a professional witness so that when they brought a case to court, he had to be the expert on that information. So he knows okay. how to research, you know what I mean? He knows how to be able to, uh, to, to legally, um, to that, to that level where someone says, okay, this person knows what he's talking about. Well, he turned that on when he was questioning the whole climate change. Uh, or, or global warming thing, he started because he had like a minor in uh, meteorology from his back his baccalaureates, mm -hmm. and um, so he just started uh, that that became his special interest. I don't even think he's a, an Aspie, but um, he might. Be. Oh, you, you, not only Aspies have special interests. Mm -hmm. sure, sure. Otherwise, hobbies exist, right? Right, right. It's just that we tend to we they're all encompassing for us, mm -hmm. right? Whereas for others, they may not be. Right. I right. think that difference. Right? Mm hmm. That's interesting, yeah. They have a little better filter at trying to spread them out to their friends. <laughs> yeah. We don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he, mm -hmm. one of the one of the emerging um, theories, I guess, in uh, in cosmetology, cosmetology. That's that's makeup. Um, and and uh, um, in in his study it was, it was, I was going to say, in past the climate. See, he's he's extended past uh, Earth climate, and he's gone to um, the how the sun and everything affects the whole solar system and how the galaxies affect everything. So, and there's a, um, there's the theory that there's, and I think they call it the electric universe where there is a, there is a, the energy of, and not just, everything's affecting everything else on an electromagnetic level. And, and I think mm -hmm. this goes into the subatomic as well as the celestial. Mm -hmm. And it's just fascinating because, just to see the, the different bright minds that are then the theories that are coming out. But, and I was looking at that and I was just thinking how that, at least what we were, the reason I brought this up was because you're talking about how everything's connected. And there literally is, they're, they're showing that there is this electromagnetic connection, how literally this whole butterfly effect I the idea where the smallest thing influences the largest thing. And, and it's just, it's all one. Yeah. It's just a beautiful system, and it's a what? Well, like, like I like to think of it like in just a, just an analogy, just to simplify it. Right? This is clearly not technically accurate, but I like to think of the universe like a swimming pool, right? But with many layers. Every every every. Uh, so basically, the universe is like the the swimming pool is space and time, right? That's space time. So, and then you get matter. So every little bit of matter creates a ripple on top of the pool, right? So that's that's space time. That's that's our reality. We live on the, that surface ripple, right? And the more little bits of matter they get together, they they join and make the ripples bigger. So that's how you sink, and that's how you get gravity, right? That's gravity, where just mass creates its own gravity on the on the medium that we live in, right? And that's probably the quantum realm, right? Okay. And, and like that's just simple as I look at it, right? I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a proponent of uh, pilot wave theory and uh, you've probably never even heard of that. And most people haven't, but it's basically what I'm saying. Okay. Basically, uh, matter creates its own ripple in the fabric of space time. And, and that's all gravity is. Right? So things tend to fall towards each other and the electromagnetism takes over. Wow. Your regular old strong magnetism force. That's what gravity is. And people, now that's just my theory. I have no mathematical background that you can talk about that. But in my head, it makes sense. Yeah, 
Right. And that's all I need, right? It's just a way to, for it to make sense in my head, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because, like, I, I started thinking one time about, well, what's the difference between space and time? And I start, started that same, right? Because if you take either one of them out of the equation, it eliminates the other, right? So there's space between me and you right now, right? Right. Or is there? Or is it just time? Because if you take the space away, there's no time because we're we're together. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a very weird. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to wrap your head around. Yes. The, how huge and, and that is, but I, but I believe that's all it is, right? And and I think once you get down into the quantum realm, that kind of gets fuzzy. And that's why you can have electrons and things in two places at once. Well, no, not really. It's just we don't understand the concept of how they're moving at that point, what? or are they moving? Are they stagnated? Right. Uh, but the only way to the only way to make sense of it is through mathematics. I've, I, I I used to I used to fight against that because I don't know I don't like math. It, it's irritating. But then a, a really smart guy said to me one time that it's the only way that the physicists and math, mathematicians can actually visualize what's going on. That's why they use math. Mm-hmm. So in my Aspie brain, that was like, oh, oh, so they can't just look at it in their head like we can. Not all of us, but I just look at it in my head. It's like, okay, well, that's it. And I move the things around in my head. Right. They can't do that. Right? Well, well, I think that's the, and Einstein. I think that's what, I think he, he, he. For sure he did it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't come, he wasn't working out what the world was through math. He knew what the world no, no, was no. and explained it through Not math. Exper- yeah. He, he just had somebody prove he wasn't wrong through math. Yeah. 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 Basically, that's what math does, right? So, yeah, he, yeah, he did, he did his thing in thought experiments, and and when you think about his thought experiments, they're very simple, and and it really works out into just just what it was I just said there. Uh, that's where I got it from, right? It's from from his uh, thought experiments on the train and relativity, and it's very it's very simple, right? We're all just the observer who I you know, time is relative to everyone. I was Look, fascinated with his example of the train too, where he dropped the ball and threw the ball. Is that the or the, the observer yeah. seeing the ball? I thought oh, that just was the lights, everything. Yeah, it just like an, it just makes sense, right? Yes, always. Oh, because we're all already moving, right? And then everybody's moving relative to everybody else and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and it is fascinating. And people make it way more complex than that. It isn't any more complex. That's it. <laughs> well, and and the way right? what I and remember that, that does. What fascinated me about what he said there was, too, is that there are different realities happening in the same space. And and I thought, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And then I, I catch that once in a while. I'll think in those terms. And I'll go, yeah, I just saw it here in the, you know, you, in, in a car that goes by you. They're seeing something different than what you're experiencing. You exactly know? they are. And it doesn't just, and here's what a lot of I see modern physicists and that, they get annoyed at this. But I've actually heard Einstein say Relativity exists in everything, not just gravity, not just time. It's everything. Yeah. Every observer has their own observation of everything. Yeah. Right? The piece of grass there is looking at the world in a different way you are, mm-hmm. but it isn't any less real. Right. Right. And that's where you get into the connections, right? Once we can figure out how we're all connected, well, then maybe we can advance. Well, and Or maybe not. And the, maybe this is it. The whole, the whole concept, I mean, this is one thing I think we have learned as Aspies, to a greater degree than most non uh, Aspies was that is is we've had we've had to sort of have we've had one foot in the Aspie world and one foot in the neurotypical world so we've kind of lived yeah. a life of relativity. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so it's just a uh, and and I think that makes that just that's one of the that's one of the advantages that's one of those hard things to explain to somebody that's not autistic um is like what's you know why would you want to be it's like well if i had to give up some of those things i i wouldn't it wouldn't be me i mean i it'd be death <laughs> i mean would, would you want to die or do you want to be autistic i would rather be autistic <laughs> I'd rather rather be autistic yeah. yeah yeah i'm okay with my autism because i'm not I'm, i don't have that nonverbal, overwhelming yeah. part of it right but i mean there's neurotypicals who have diseases like that as well. It's not just, you know, people always point that that's autism. No, no, no more, no more is, like, you know, like a little black mole on your bone. That's not all cancers, right? Now that all lung cancers are not killing you, right? There's varying degrees. It's relative. Mm-hmm. Everything's relative. <laughs> How it affects a person. And it's just strange. And then you find like the, like intelligence people think these nonverbal people are not intelligent. You give them a typewriter. They seem to be fairly intelligent. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, the, and the, like that. I wonder: are they smarter than us? Are they just more sensitive than us? And they just can't handle 
you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by that, like what goes on in their minds. Well, right? I could tell you just from my own experience of, uh, and I never thought of this as becoming nonverbal or anything, but I, I have two things that happen to me. One is that I will, I will, it's like my, I will lose a connection between the intent of what I'm thinking and what I, how I, and what I want to communicate and the symbol that communicates that. So that I'll like, and it can be a, a proper noun. It can be the name, someone's name. I, you know, I can forget your name or I can, I'll be talking about something. And if I'm a little tired or fatigued, really, it's just like, I, I will have said it. I will have already thought through the thought process and I'll know that word. But then when it comes to producing it, it's gone. I don't know. Yeah, I have that that issue as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. With mundane little simply names, um, things like that. Yeah, I have that as well. Okay. Uh, but generally, so I, I have the ADD Aspie guy, right? And that's the guy that like this guy right here that happens to. But then there's the other side of me that every I'm sure every Aspie has that focus side. So once I get over the ADD and I ignore that and I hyper focus, none of that exists. Then it's a well-oiled machine. Everything works, but generally there won't be anybody else around. I'm right. just going to say, so not remember anybody's names. You know, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know, scale on a guitar or or whatever. And then that hyper focus comes in, and I can get lost in there for hours. And then I'm happy. That's me happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. This is the only time I'm really happy is when I'm fully engaged. But the problem is for people like us to be fully engaged all the time. Society won't have it. Right. They just won't. Yeah. We can't live like that. Right? Just, what are we going to do? We're just gonna sit there, just staring into space for hours, like because that's what I do, right? I don't need anything to to come up with these things. I don't need to touch anything. It's all in there. I just shut the world out and go for a walk in my head. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. I've been. Uh, yep, yep. I was at. I I don't know how much of this is. I don't know what's what. I'm still trying to figure out what's ASD, ADD, <laughs> whatever. But. Um, I um, when I when I was diagnosed, I had gone to see a counselor who, I, who herself was ADHD, and her daughter is ADHD, who was a diagnosed Aspie, which is another another story. But she, that's how she got into the field. Which she said she started studying her daughter and under, trying to understand what Asperger's was, and she. Mm -hmm. Eventually got her, uh, uh, I guess, her master's in uh, counseling, and. Um, uh, and she's been in the field for like 20 some years and she said that's basically the population she served is uh, AD, ADD, ADHD, AD, ASD and um, yeah. she said I see them as one as the same anymore I said I, I think that's what they're going to find is that they're they're the, they're the different sides of the same coin um, I, I think I think they all are I think I think when you get into all of them right so you get the you get bipolar you get the, those are just excitabilities Right. So a lot of it, I think a lot of the people that get into really trouble are just people who they don't get enough stimulation for the brain. For whatever reason, their brain requires more stimulation than our society can give it. And it manifests as these different disorders uh, because at one time they were for something. Right? Those people existed because we that was a need for us to survive. Right. It's like the ADD guy. Yeah. Well, what better person to the ADD asked me to hyper focus on a trail and follow an animal for three days so that everybody else can catch up and eventually kill it right uh stuff like that we're good at that uh but we're maybe not so good at uh you know going and collecting water and and, and and tending the plants every day right maybe we're not so good at that but there was somebody else who was that good mm -hmm. all of these personality types while we call them disorders now in society at one point they weren't disorders right right even i hate to say it the the old evil psychopath well, he had his point, right? He could lead your armies, and he's not going to make the strange decision about, well, no, we just got to burn the, burn these guys down. They keep hurting us. We need that in society, right? The, the, the grizzly bears come in the door, kill it. You know, send the psychopath out. Yeah. You know, you're not going to send the Aspie. We'll just try to go reason with it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can't come in here and do this. Right? But there are horror personality types who are quite good at that. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I think just now in our society, uh, in, the, in this industrial capitalist society we are, we are not fit we're not welcomed we can work in it we we can be innovators we're good at it but we aren't the mundane we aren't the we aren't the sit in the cubicle and and just 
routinely do our stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not in us. It's not what we're for. We, mm -hmm. we don't. It isn't good enough. We're like, well, come on, I can do more. What What right? do you think? This is a question I wanted to ask you. Was it? Uh, what do you think? Because I see so many people. I mean, I, I've I've got friends uh, on the spectrum that uh, overwhelm easy, uh, fatigue easy, and uh, um, some of it I think is that they never learned their their personal skills of how to manage their own of capabilities and and when they need to rest how to rest and all those kind of things yeah. so i think part of it is a developmental uh an issue of of their lives but um i just i still think that there needs to be accommodations made in in the general society for us because i think oh 100 well, percent. yes there, but the, yeah, ben we do need a comment. Yeah. the benefits i think that society is losing from having people that i know that are sitting at home i mean some of these people were professionals they were teachers or whatever and just got yeah. to the age or whatever it was like i can't handle this anymore and well, there was because the masking right the masking yeah so eventually it just become fun right? yeah and i think it's happened so, like, to me it's actually sort of I've written on Quora uh, more than once. Uh, like the next Einstein, the next Newton in the world. Well, they're not going to come out because they're medicated. Ooh. They're on mood stabilizers. These little kids are on mood stabilizers, man. They're not. You're not going to see them anymore. Wow, that's they're amazing. gone because all the gifts, like the most gifted people in society, people think they're disordered when they're babies. Yep, I know. Yeah. Like imagine, like imagine what I was like at six months old, man. I could talk. By a year, I could talk like an adult. Before two, I was reading anything. What do they do with a kid like that nowadays? Yeah. They medicate them. They did it to me in 1971. Guaranteed, they're doing it again. Yeah. They're just medicating every kid for ADD who's just a little bit noisy. Well, well, mm. guess what? When I'm on ADD meds, although I can focus on the mundane, it takes away that abstract. A little bit like the, like right now i'm not on any meds right so if, if we want to go to an abstract realm no problem boom i'm there mm -hmm. brain set up for that but with the add meds not so much don't really want to rather sit and like noodle away with my guitar for hours on end right it still stimulates me it's an artificial stimulation that we don't really need i don't think society needs it either interesting there's a lot of innovators who are going to be medicated out of being innovators i'm not saying i'm one of them by the way i, I, I have no point like, if anything, I'm innovative at objects. I like to argue and make noise and irritate people. But there are other people who are brilliant at math and, and like, brilliant at these kind of things. I'm not one of those people, right? I'm good at communicating. I'm good at psychology and things like that, right? Uh, I'm good at hypothesizing. But actually getting anything done, not so much. But there are people who are. Those people are going to be medicated out of existence. That's a, that's a yeah. scary, scary thought. Um, I already have. The last time you've seen a, a Feynman or an Einstein around. What do we got? Neil deGrasse Tyson? Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. He's not that smart. Hmm. I know 10 has to be smarter than him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, who would blow him away? I, um, I've i actually been, uh, one of the things when I was seeing that counselor who was uh, ADHD was, uh, she said, she said, one way I can sort of tell it, you know, what side of this coin that you, you mostly fall on is let's just try um, Vyvanse, which is a, you know... Um, yep, I, I've taken Vyvanse, yep. Okay. And, um, so I, and, and the first time I took one, I thought I had solved the world. I mean, I, I felt absolutely normal. <laughs> I don't know how to put yeah, it. It's, it's, it's like... All the noise in your head. Yes, off. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and, and of course, but it didn't take long for them to start getting headaches. And, and I realized it just cranked my body. So my mind, I mean, yeah, I could focus, but I was burning out. It's like I don't, there needs to be a recovery there. Um, and yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, you got to take little holidays from it, I find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I find with me, uh, although, like, if I was in university or something, sure, the advance would help, right? If I need to do something tedious and tactical, the advance helps. But on the downside of it, 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 it takes away the ADD, which makes me way less social, right? So it increases the ASPE in intensity and lowers the ADD flippancy. So people don't like me as much. I might be more comfortable and able to actually navigate society better, all of that. Yeah. But it isn't me, and people aren't going to like me. So it, 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 it's like a mask remover that you're not even trying to remove your mask. It, it's, it's just taking it from you. 
That's fascinating because I, I, that you said that because there was a bit of the words right out of my mouth was that I was saying, as I was taking it, I said, I think this is making me more, more autistic. Um, yeah. It brings out the autism and that's not what we want. We want the ADD out there. Well, the, Nobody but, dislikes ADD. But, the, but you say the advantage is, I mean, I was learning, I'm learning a, a program that's a 3D modeling called the Blender. And it's really, really complex, but I, you know, I was like, I love it, you know. Um, but well, I, we'd I, like that. That's emulating for us, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I sat, I don't know how many hours, I mean, like six, six hours or more, eight hours that I sat there watching the tutorials on from the company, you know, and they're like four or five minute tutorials, but it's like, I mean, you're just sitting there in this absorb mode. It's like, <sighs> oh, I know it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's it, it is it's an it's an amazing feeling. Um, and I don't, I have a hard time reaching that now. I don't know if it's age. I don't know what it is, but um, maybe that maybe that means I am more aspy than ADHD. Uh, that if without it, I don't know. I'm still sort of you know defining all those things. So I found with myself, and I know, and I understand that I'm rare in this. I, I understand my, like, like I have a couple of disorders that go together to, to make me a little bit rare and make, um, I, I can turn that on and off. Okay. Yeah, I can turn the ADD on and off. I can turn the, the intense focus, the hyper focus. I could turn it on and off if I'm alone, right? If I'm alone and I want to learn something, I just click it into gear, right? Uh, like and it goes right so, so like they say i want to learn a song on the guitar i just click in the gear shout out the outside world it's there it's focused but if somebody's around me the add part bubbles up right mm. that's where the if that's where the vivance would just say oh, yeah, go away mm -hmm. right the vivance it's all of that that all of that autistic or giftedness whatever it comes out right whatever part of that is uh -huh. um the Vivance will stop me from having the natural control over it. It'll just keep it. It'll it'll keep the ADD at bay a little bit, mm -hmm. and then the then the frustration starts. The intense frustration starts that I can't just be flipping. It's it, yeah. It does work great for some things, but it's not all right. encompassing. Right. It, it works great for me for sleep, for instance, like which is a crazy thing. Yeah, amphetamine helps me sleep. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a child of the 80s. First time I ever did cocaine, I fell asleep promptly 15 minutes later, right? So <laughs> we're a different breed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The ADD here, right? And that's the ADD. Interesting. There's nothing other than ADD. That's, I think that's so true about medications uh, in general, too, because um, this, my sensitivity to medications, um, even with the Vivance, uh, I take, a, I break, I open the capsule and I take a small portion of that. I don't need a whole capsule. You know, they could probably give me a little smaller dose, but I don't bother with it. But uh, it's been that way with everything. And I remember I had, uh, you know, the, uh, I don't know how old this was, but I had gone to the doctor and they had come to the conclusion, oh, this must be something to do with depression. So it was starting on one of the, um, I think it was Zoloft or whatever, and and I, I know it didn't work with me. And then I, this years later, I went back to a doctor, and then, and I started that. And of course, it takes usually supposed to take what like a a month or something for it to kick in yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, two I, weeks for the effect, and then yeah. Well, I took that, and I felt that that day. And I knew what those, I knew what that feeling was that day. And so the, you know, and I remember the doctor saying, well, there's no way you could feel that right now. I was like, you know, I know, I know what this is. Yeah, we and, and so I thought, but I mean, it's, I don't know if that's a body memory or, or what it is, but uh, I mean. It was so just it's very possible that you're like me. So like when they did my cognitive test, like my, what amazed that my doctor was my intrapersonal awareness right which is a rare thing not a lot of people have that like but i think a lot of aspies have it's the ability to like we know what's happening with our body yeah we're very very in tune to that mm -hmm. right we you know we know we can actually we can we can manipulate our hormone system things like that they know we can do that we can't it takes like we don't, we're just not natural at it but we can actually get to the point where we are hyper aware of what's going on in our bodies. We can feel it. That's what that'll be. So with you, you're, you're uh, susceptible to drugs. I'm the opposite. I've got the really high tolerance, so I need extra, 
right? And I also don't seem to get the same effects that other people get, mm. right? I don't know if that's just a combination of who we are. Um, be, uh, like, yeah, I like marijuana, for instance, legal in Canada, right? Right. I'll, I'll sit and smoke with Willie and Snoop Dogg. No problem, right? And, and I'll be fine, whereas other people can't do that. And it's not something I practiced. It's just, I was born that way, right? Uh, but it doesn't work like that with everything, right? Like mar- um, uh, alcohol, I don't have a particular high tolerance for, right? You know what I mean? Like um, amphetamine, I have a crazy high intolerance, but maybe that's because I did it for so long. And, and I had a, a you know a, quite a history with uh, self-medicating, we'll call it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I've gone through all the drugs, right? So I've probably done most of this to myself, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I just messed with my dop- dopamine receptors and whatnot, but. Like, I found uh, one of my, like, it's funny, like, uh, when I was younger, I used to like the drug MDMA, right? And everybody calls it the empath. It's an empath drug. It never happened to me. But what I would get, that other people, I would get incredible tactile stimulation, right? I don't know if it has something to do with the axolithemia or whatever it is, right? But I wouldn't feel closer to people. Nah, they're just people. But if they touched me, it's like, oh, it was like magic when they touched me. And and I never experienced anybody else who had it the way I did. Huh. Right, so everybody's different. Everybody experiences things different, right? And uh, at, at some point, I think it's just our brain controls how we want to feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I like, so that, that I amplify that in me. And and when it comes to like the uh, intoxicating effects that I don't like, I just ignore those or or let them go and just guide them. I think we can do that. I think everybody can do it. We're just in tune to ourselves, so we. Like everybody knows somebody who's been drunk and got an emergency phone call, boom, sobered up just like that. Right? Everybody knows that. Well, you can do a drug too. It happens. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we are much more in control of, of, of how our body reacts. And I mean everybody. I don't mean just us. I mean everybody is much more in control. And they just, they lose the control. They're, they're, a lot of people's desires when they take a drug is to lose that Exactly. Control. That's what I was going to say. It is not that for me. I want to heighten that and control what it is, right? And I can't, right? But I think everybody can. But I could be wrong. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It might be an Aspie, might be an ADD thing. I don't know, right? but I know that like I've talked to many people, and none of them do what I do. Like my one buddy, that one crazy guy, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, he can, but he's extremely smart too. Like he's not only is uh, he has his issues, but he's very intelligent, which is probably what makes him a good person. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's the so that guy I was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I let his name slip up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that well, I was just—I was just trying to think of what my uh, something you had said was sort of like another avenue we were going down, which is—I I, I guess the neurological. Uh, you know, people say you meet one one Aspie, you've met one Aspie, and I think it boils down to the um, when you when you're talking about the the uniqueness that we are each is an, uh, how we've developed neurologically, where it doesn't seem to happen in the. Uh, non-autistic brain and, and nervous system um, that yeah. I mean we are you know it's like whatever happened to you whatever caused you to be you know James um, ha- these are the things that happen with different drugs with uh, thought processes and all this and it's so cool yeah. because it's uh, um, I don't know it's just it's 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 one of those it's one of those aspects of us that uh, I think Fright. I mean, I don't know. If frightens the word, but uh, people that are not autistic, they're used to. They can. They can. They can be together, and everybody's pretty much the same. They. They. They know how everyone acts and reacts and all this. They get with us, and it's like we're this big mystery, and, and the fear of the unknown. Well, I guess. Right. We don't fit the mold of what they're used to, and then yeah. it gets worse when we tell them, "Oh, well, we're autistic." They're like, "No, you're not. Rayman's autistic, not you." Yeah. And that just makes it further worse for them, right? And I and I do see a lot of people on our Embrace Embrace ASD community. I see a lot of them and they and they have a lot of frustration over the fact that they can't fit into society, society won't accept them. And and in some some part of my head it's like they're the majority. It isn't their job to accept us. It's our job to fit in. However we do that, however we're comfortable. They should accept us. But they shouldn't have to change any of their behaviors for us. We need to do that for them because we're the minority. That would be it, what what you get is the same thing. 
and I have no issues with transgender people. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't, I'm just using it as an example. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as transgender people saying, well, no, you need to call me this. Well, the vast majority of people don't like that. They may do it, but they're not going to like it. That's going to, that's going to instill hate eventually. Right. So you get the same thing with us because we're so close and we can so, it's just much easier for us to mask a little bit to make them comfortable than have no mask and make them always uncomfortable because that uncomfortableness it, it seeds after a while and it becomes worse mm -hmm. right and i think that, like and i'm talking with people our age okay. i think the younger folks they are better at it they are much better at being acceptance for everybody yeah they are right but i can tell you that, that it only goes to a certain extent it's fine if you're transgendered it's fine if you're autistic or but try telling them that you're profoundly gifted. Right? Try telling them your IQ is over 160. Try telling them that. Nobody's going to like you that. Nobody. They're going to be afraid of you. They're going to think you're a liar, even if you can show them a test. Here it is. They're not going to like that. So there's only certain things people will accept, right? Uh, for some, it's like physical appearance. Like they can't get over black people or fat people, whatever. Right? But for everybody, that intelligence play comes into it, Right? Or if, or if you happen to be a psychopath, right? Say, for instance, or a pedophile. Say you, say you're a pedophile. I'm not saying you are, but, but you've never committed a crime. But it's in your head that, like you know, and you've got treatment for that. There's people on poor is why I, why I use this example. Well, even though you've never done anything wrong, even though it's the way you were born, people are going to automatically hate you for that and want to hurt you. Right. right. So there are limits to where we can go with acceptance. Right. As long as it doesn't bother anybody, it's cool. The problem is with people like us, we upset them. Our difference upsets them a little bit. And we just have to make them comfortable. That's our job. It isn't their job to make us comfortable. You know what I mean by I, that's a tough I, one to swallow, but it's true nonetheless. I, I, I mean, because I feel like uh, up until the point, this is what was so freeing about me finding that I was autistic. And and because I was hiding it all. Uh, of course, part sure. of it, you kind of know my background. My father was the way he was. And, and I yeah. felt from... I, I have a similar abusive past. Oh, okay, so. okay, and from yeah. that, so I the way and I just pulled inside. I just said, okay, don't make any waves. Just be the smiley, nice little kid that doesn't that you right. get only positive feedback from this this man. And I sort of uh, projected that on everyone. So I kind of have lived in a little restricted cocoon all my life, and right. Um, and so I, I was able to then to say, okay, that's I, I don't need to do that anymore, and that was very freeing. And I still, and I really feel that my message that I'm, at least at least I feel is that the when you're talking about having to when you're in Rome, do as the Romans do, you know. When when you're in that situation where, yeah, you you don't want to piss, you don't try to piss piss people off, and be no, we don't have to try. We do it wrong, yeah. Well, well, but I but I mean, yeah. I think there there's you can you can be different if you're a good diplomat of your differences as far as if you can say exactly this is exactly what i'm talking about yes you, you said it better than i could say it right okay yeah, of course you're going to be different everybody's different but when you try to say to like the vast majority of the population well i'm different damn it and you have to just accept me the way i am that's not gonna happen right right that's it, complication it wouldn't matter if you were like you could be an orange person like trump people hate him because he's orange well like and, like nothing beyond that like they look at him there are people who go i can't deal with this man because he has orange skin well an, an idea Just that comes to mind is, right beautiful women if a beautiful woman says I mean, you know, that's 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 the B word, you know. I mean, that's like you're just being a, you know. But when it's a person, I mean, I, I think of this as. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking of Taylor Swift. One thing I, I, was, I was watching her, and I always was. Um, uh, I always applauded that, that she she seemed to always reach out to do something kind, always to do something yeah. with her power, with her ability, and it made her. Yeah. Then I then I could see her as a beautiful person, not just an attractive yeah. woman, but a beautiful person. Yeah. But when a person is when an attractive woman says, "You will like me," or this I'm special because I'm attractive, it loses all the specialness. Or, or when Beyonce lip syncs the national anthem, right? Taylor Swift wouldn't lip sync the national anthem. Just using two singers who are extremely popular, Beyonce lip sync the national anthem. Like really? Yeah. It, like I'm sure you could sing it word for word. 
I'm a Canadian. I could sing yours word for word. No, but we had our Toronto Maple Leaf fans. They had a problem with your singer. They finished your anthem for you. Like, no problem. And she had to lip sync it. She's a professional singer. I think that's kind of what you're talking about, right? That, that same kind of... Taylor Swift wouldn't do that. She, she's secure in who she is. Hmm. She actually is a real person. She has talent, right? Beyonce's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. 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 I don't know her that well. To be. Honest. I'm just. You know. So. So. I. But I, I, just, uh, I don't either. And it's just. I'm just using a blanket. Right. Listen, Beyonce. I'm sorry. You could be the most talented person in the world. Just use you as an example. I apologize if it's not true. But you did lip sync the national anthem. <laughs> well, uh, Lady Gaga. Is, you know, I used to go. Oh gosh. You know, can she yeah. be more ridiculous? And then I started started seeing her talent, and I went, Oh yeah. my God. She can she call herself deal, whatever lady. she wants and dress however she wants. She I will respect her, you know. See, I think she's one of us, right? I think she's one of us. That's a good... I, and I, they've got that poor girl. Like I watched a lot of the uh, Graham Norton show in Britain. If you've not watched it, it's hilariously funny. You should watch it. It's on YouTube. Okay. And I watch, I, I've seen her on there, and they've got that poor girl so medicated on uh, uh, bipolar drugs or whatever drugs they're giving her. It's, they're going to take her talent from her, right? Mm-hmm. Right now she's fighting it, you know, but they're going to take, I've been on those drugs. I know what it can do to you. Hmm. I know what those antipsychotics can do to people like us. They take everything away from you. Yeah. You just become a zombie robot, right? Yep. 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 And some of us, some of us are completely aware that it's happening and it causes hostility within ourselves, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Um, It's it's a, I I think, uh, I, I think they need to get rid of, uh, all of these SSRIs, all these that they don't know what they do anyway. Yeah. Just get rid of them, right? Right. Like you want a good anxiety thing, go to CBD, man. It works. It works like a charm, right? You want it to work better, put some THC with it. It works even better, right? Just don't overdo it or the THC might cause more anxiety, right? There's balance and everything. Yeah, yeah. I wish that was, it it is legal here in this country, but uh, I've, and I've been tempted to, uh, the one physician I had that worked, Long story short, I don't have him anymore. For I'm going back to him as soon as I can. But he would be someone I could say, you know, I'd like to try this. I think he'd be okay for it. Um, yeah. The new doctor I haven't even seen yet. And uh, but anyway, but I, my story. What I was just going to say was I, I've heard so many people say beneficial things about that. I wish it was just something yeah. I could just try. See, yeah. I find myself, Thomas. I don't use ADD meds anymore. Uh, I use I use cannabis. Right. Okay. Uh, I use both uh, CBD and the THC oil, right? It's got both in it. Uh, and I find that it, it's, it's much more effective Wow! in a holistic way. Yes. Then that's of advance. Sure. If I need to be able to hyper focus on something <laughs> and it doesn't matter if my hair is on fire, I'm still going to finish what exactly. I'm doing. Advance is great for that. But if I want to be a, like a person who can go to work and function socially and be a normal guy, a few drops of that oil every day, quietens my head enough that uh, you know i don't see the bird and outside the window and start you know yeah writing a story or a song about what i saw yeah i can actually just do my work like a normal person right? yeah well, as normal as i get right right <laughs> right right but you know what i mean like uh, i find it and and there is no side effects other than i don't have any arthritis pain either mm-hmm. cool. um i mean and you could still get impaired with it right you don't have to, you can microdose with these things, right? Like, so what I'm talking about is microdosing, right? I'll microdose on THC, it doesn't go to work, right? But it's nothing, it's like 0.1 milligram or something like that, right? A yeah. tiny little amount, but it seems to help the ADD. Cool, cool. It really does. Huh? I, I recommend it for anxiety ADD. Um, we it's are really, really good for we are com- great for autism. Okay, I, I I would like to try that. It would. Um, I'm just I'm looking at a time now. We're we're it's been about an hour now, and um, oh, has it? I, I'm a bit of a talker, so <laughs> you know, that, no, that's cool. No, I just I think we've been I think it's been a great a, a great uh, flow of thoughts we've gone on, and uh, it's just that when I try to uh, publish these things, I just noticed the statistics is that people have about a maybe 15 minute. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, attention span, and they don't really want to sit at oh, all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we are bad examples of attention span because when we're interested in something, I could do this all day. How about you? Yeah, I know. Oh, right? I've years. done it. See, I, that's a, that's the whole thing. What I often say to people with ADD, people say people with ADD can't focus. Sure, we can. It's just choosing what we focus on. That I've, is the problem. 
there's a there's a lady who's becoming a very good friend in Australia that uh, we will get on Skype, and we will go six and a half hours, just sit yeah. and talk, and we're just be yeah, like, oh my work. gosh. So on Quora, there's there's some profoundly gifted people, right? There's I don't know four or five of us. We we oftentimes will have a a little short chat. We do it on Whereby, as I was saying, right? And those they can go like six, seven hours, no problem. And, and nobody cares. We're all just sitting around. We're usually all doing something else. Like, you know, I'll be middle of the car or whatever. And we're all chatting. And, and the, it's, a, it's a chat very much like this. Um, but it goes everywhere. Yeah. You know, somebody might bring up physics, somebody might bring up whatever else. And it just goes back and then it comes right back. Yeah. And it's just a wonderfully flowing chat that it's very hard to get anywhere else. Right. And listen, I don't care if people believe in the giftedness and all that. We're different. We're definitely different. Whether we're smart or anything, I don't believe that. Uh -huh. We just have different brains. They operate differently. Yeah. They're good at things like IQ tests. <laughs> Are they good at freaking going shopping at the mall? No, not so much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just we're good at Yeah. Right? And I wish people would, would not get so excited about that. Mm -hmm. None of us think we're better than anybody else. Trust me, I'm one of the worst people you'll meet for most normal things, right? But when it comes to these tests, I'm good at them. Cool. Give, cut us some slack. It's, we were just born like that. Nobody gets mad at runners because they're faster than everybody else, right? <laughs> but it seems to be like, especially we Aspies, right? Because we're clearly, you're gifted as well if you're a high-functioning Aspie. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it works, right? Maybe you've never had an IQ test. doesn't really matter. You're still gifted. It's what allows this. Yeah. Right? We're very lucky in that regard, and I think people need to understand that. Yeah. Because right? yeah. when you meet one who isn't gifted, well, it's the whole different world, right? There's no masking for those folks and, you know, yeah. they don't have our benefits, right? Yeah. And so I'm very, very aware of that. Mm -hmm. Right. That'd be a, oh, we, we, you know, we'll do this again if you'd like to. Oh, and, anytime. Yeah. yeah. And because I think we, we'll just, we'll just hit topic after topic because what comes up is, a, is oh. to talk about the people that are not as gifted that have um, autism. And uh, um, yeah. that, that'd be. But a, I think, I think the reason I talk about it. Is because I think we can help them. Yes, yes. That's why I talk, right? Because because they look at us and go, oh, oh, oh. no, no, we're just good at certain little things. We can teach you. Yeah, we can teach you how to do this, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, cool. We had a lifetime of pain and struggle learning how to do it, and but we're good at teaching. Yes, it's what we are good at. I'm good at that. I can teach people to do this. I can teach them to communicate, but I have to do it in person. I can't do it in writing. Mm -hmm. Like, am I not awfully different in writing? verbally than i am writing mm -hmm. like natalie said i'm very cold when i write things like that right it's, it appears cold i think i'm getting better at it but i, I never wrote before i went on quora right mm -hmm. but i was talked don't have any problem there <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool okay uh james thank you so much and we'll do this again uh for sure no problem and thank you for having me oh it's, it's i've been a pleasure to see you again too uh and yeah, yeah i enjoy just chatting with you I, anytime i just you don't have to interview you just call me and chat okay i like chatting that sounds cool. and i like that right when because i can actually see you in chat that makes a difference to me. it does it really right. does and yeah. people can me how much i move as well <laughs> that's cool that's oh cool. crazy james Okay. Hey, well, do me a favor when you're editing this. If you if you use the part about my buddy, uh, please take his name out. Um, I, I only use his first name, but please take it out if you're editing that. This is uh, uh, about the gentleman that. My, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I used his first name. If if you happen to use that, just take his first name out. That was in Whatever. the beginning. Too. It isn't right. Right. What's that? That was at the beginning. No, I just did it like about ten minutes ago while on mail. Okay. Okay. I, I did it later on when I was explaining, and I just used his name and just yeah. If you use it, just take it out. It's not, okay. I didn't get permission for that. Right? Okay, will do. All right. Thanks okay. again, James. People will know who he is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and thanks everyone out there in uh, YouTube land. Uh, we'll do this again. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, guys. Okay.